Okay, as a last part in this module, we'll discuss the concept of building our own modeling languages or what I've already mentioned, domain-specific languages. So, uh, UML, for example, is complex and it's general purpose, so it's supposed to be usable for everything in the software world and that makes it extremely extremely complex and that's why especially beginners are often confused by all the different elements you have by the different arrows uh, and don't even go to the level of what does all of this actually mean so sometimes uh, you want to have your own specific language and there are different ways to describe a language uh, if you have ever taken a compiler course or will then you will get used to the concept of grammars, so textual mathematical notations that explain what kind of concepts are you allowed to use, what kind of keywords are there and so on. But uh, in the modeling world, very often what we use is a model to describe a language. Uh, and this is known as a meta model. So it's a model that describes what kind of models you can create. Uh, and this is a very complex concept, so I just thought of describing it uh, using an example. So if we go back to our state machine, we have states and transitions between them, and they can have events, for example, add. Uh, and then we have these kind of special ones we can do can end the state machine uh, and if you would now like to describe the language of state machines so what what can you do in a state machine we could draw another diagram another model that describes this and, and what is common is to use the class diagram notation uh, so and I'll just sketch this because state diagrams, state machine diagrams are extremely complex as well you can do a lot of things uh, so I'll just show you in, in which direction this would go but what we first of all have are states so we can just have a class state. And there are of course a number of different attributes we can set here. We have for example a state name. I skipped the parameters for now. Uh, there might be other things, for example, in, in a real UML state machine diagram you have the actions inside the do entry exit actions. Uh, we'll skip them here. You have transitions. And a transition in a state machine is always directed. It goes from an origin to a target. So a transition connects two states. One of them is the target state. The other one is the origin state. Uh, and each state can have a number of outgoing No, now I have to make this the right way around. Uh, this would be the incoming ones and a number of outgoing transitions. So basically the transitions that leave the state machine, like this transition is an outgoing transition of state A, and the ones that come in, like B has the incoming transition here. Uh, so this kind of describes what kind of states we have and how they're related then of course a transition in our case just to keep it simple every transition can have an event uh, again we can make this more complicated I think in practice they can have multiple events and they of course can have uh, guards when you are allowed to take that one they can have effects so there are a lot of things there but to simplify it here we say each transition has let's say one zero or one uh, event and each event could theoretically be used in a number of transitions. So that's what we have there. Then, of course, you can start making this more complex. For example, in the UML state machine diagram, we have a uh, parent state. So we have hierarchies. Now my pen is starting to, to lose it. Um, but we could, for example, uh, support this by having a composition in UML so we could say a state can own a number of uh, other states so 
This is basically how you can sketch these things. Uh, and what we have here is a formalization, is a description of the language of state machines. So this is a meta model of a state machine model. So that's something if you do language engineering or if you go into uh, model-based engineering, you want to do code generation or generate other things, you will work a lot with these kind of models. Uh, these are usually basic class diagrams uh, that describe the language. And if they're small, then they're simple to understand. So uh, this is very good. But this is also why I don't show you the UML meta models. They are also described in class diagrams, but they're extremely complicated. Uh, and usually there are several class diagrams to describe a single notation, uh, a single UML diagram. So this is beyond the scope of this course, but you should have at least seen these, uh, this concept of a meta model. There is one thing that is important to mention here that I'm not going into is we have constraints usually. So it's not enough to have this meta model, but there are certain restrictions we have to have. For example, if you look at this, uh, we have an origin and a target. We need to make sure that uh, we cannot do arbitrary things. For example, uh, this diagram, this uh, class diagram would allow us to say that uh, this transition here has as an origin class A, but we could model this in a way that class A does not have this transition as an outgoing transition. Uh, so we could theoretically do that and that's something we need to restrict, so we need to make sure that uh, these things add up. So if a transition has an origin that then that origin also has to have this transition as an outgoing transition and so on. So usually we enhance these meta models by additional constraints to make it uh, consistent that you can only do valid models basically. Okay, so this uh, concludes the model-based engineering uh, module. As I said, this is a short run through the topic. Uh, I would encourage you to take a further course on this because it's a very interesting uh, often misunderstood topic about how we can use models in software engineering. And as I said before, the important message is, is not just UML. You can use a lot of different things. And if you understand this in depth, it's quite a powerful tool uh, for software engineering.